this rather large box just arrived. I think this is a poster, a framed poster sent from the Tate, fingers crossed. a little celebratory gift for International Women's Day a couple of weeks ago the Tate messaged me and asked if I wanted to pick out a poster or a print so I very aptly picked this Barbara Hepworth poster from an exhibition that she had at the Tate back in the 60s I absolutely love it it's quite big I don't know how I'm going to show for <laughs> the scale just how big it is it comes up to about my waist so it's it's fairly large if that gives you a gist of how big it is um, which I'm really pleased about because it will take up quite a lot of wall space. I've got some very large wall spaces that are empty at the moment and I'm struggling to fill them um, just because I, I'm struggling to just find big pieces that I like um, that can be shipped over here as well. That's the other issue. I've found quite a few artists that I like that I'd really love to commission a painting, but people uh, due to Brexit are really, like artists are really struggling to ship their work over here. So thankfully, um, this uh, print is printed in the UK using a company called King and McGore, which uh, if you go on their website, they have such a good selection of posters and prints spanning all different decades of art and design and fashion. Um, and a lot of them are available in different sizes and uh, I feel like a lot of them are priced really well, especially because a lot of them come with a really good quality frame and it's a glass frame as well. Anyway, that was quite a long spiel. Um, I promise this isn't sponsored, but the Tate did very kindly send this to me for as a gift for free. Um, I think this might go in the dining room because the dining room at the moment is very... Uh, it feels quite cold in there, uh, very sterile. There's not very many warm tones in there. So this, I think, might be a nice way to warm it up a little bit. Just while I'm kind of building a foundation of interior bits, I'm picking a lot of warm neutrals at the moment. Um, I have introduced a few pops of blue, like with the Hockney poster that you saw a couple of weeks ago. And I also got another poster that's got some blue in it. But for the most part, I'm keeping things quite neutral just at the moment. And then I might introduce some more colourful bits in the way of um sculptures and um you know more sort of like home accessories anyway that was that was a really long spiel ta-da here is my lovely poster it is 10 15 i'm still in my pajamas i haven't even had breakfast i haven't done anything why do i do this i've got things to do today and my levels of procrastination are just astronomical at the moment and i I just do this every morning. I just sit and on my phone or on my computer or watching TV, just not really doing anything. And I don't, like yesterday, I didn't really start my day until 12. <sighs> Why do I do this? Hello, hello, hello. Um, my vlogging efforts have quite frankly been atrocious this week. I'm officially declaring myself the um, chief of procrastination because, honestly, if you asked me what I had done this week, I wouldn't be able to tell you because I have just found every excuse under the sun as to why I shouldn't do the jobs that I should be doing. Honestly, I don't know what it is this week. Sometimes my procrastination gets really quite bad. Um, and I was actually reading about procrastination and how heavily linked it is with anxiety. I think when you're procrastinating, there's often that sort of feeling of, oh, I'm lazy, um, I can't be bothered to do anything. But actually, it is quite heavily linked to anxiety. Um, and it really made me think about procrastination in a different light. And because I'll have days and days and days of it, and I'm like, I am so lazy. Why can I not do anything? But it's made me think of procrastination not as something that's laziness it's just I guess another sort of 
anxious coping mechanism. But yeah, it's been really bad this week and I can't even, I'm not even doing anything. I'm literally sat, a lot of it is just on my phone. A lot of um, just sitting and not really doing a lot, but there'll be a lot going on in my mind. Um, so yeah, I've got no idea what this vlog's going to look like this week because I just feel like I haven't filmed anything and the things I have filmed, I can't remember what they are, but it, it wasn't much, I don't think. So this week, sorry, not this week, today is Friday. Um, this vlog goes up on Sunday and I'm just thinking to myself, what can I do? What can I show you in the next couple of days? Um, like some weeks I'm so sort of like pumped and like full of motivation and creativity and I've got loads of ideas for, for a vlog and then other weeks I'm like right how can I make this week look more exciting than it actually was um and this week's one of those weeks but that's perfectly normal that's the highs and lows of I guess trying to be creative or just trying to get through each week during lockdown so yeah a, a bit of a flat one this week but today I've tried to give myself a a rewarding to-do list. I think sometimes with to-do lists, when they're not rewarding tasks, that's when I really, really try and put the jobs off. So this week, sorry, not, why do I keep saying this week? Today, I have made a list of jobs that will be rewarding. And one of those jobs is to put up some of the prints because I've got that Barbara Hepworth one now. I've got a couple of others that I showed you last week from Curated Copenhagen that's, that aren't up yet. Um, and what's the joy of having them if you can't actually have them up around your house? So I'm going to do that today, which will be fun because um, I'm not, when it comes to putting up frames, I'm just sort of like, right, let's just nail in some hooks and just hope that they're at the right level. So I'm going to try and do this properly and measure out everything. Um, also, something I actually do want to do in this week's vlog is um, kind of do a little rundown of my favourite YouTubers because... Any time that someone leaves a comment saying, can you share your favourite YouTubers, that comment gets loads of thumbs up. But yeah, I just feel like it's a flat one this week. So I'm going to crack on with my to-do list and I will um, check in with you all in a bit. Okay, let's see if I can put this up without any major disasters happening. central on this wall because I have a bathroom door just here and if I put the bed central to the wall I wouldn't be able to open up my bathroom door so it's like do I put the picture central over the bed or do I put it central to the wall I'm not sure okay I've moved the bed a little bit this way just because I felt like it was too much that way anyway I can still open up the bathroom door uh, and I think I'll do it central to the bed rather than central to the wall. Ah! <laughs> okay, okay. Should be? Right. Oh, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Right, do you know what? I'm just going to go for it. Hope that it looks all right and stop trying to be so specific with it. Hmm, now that I've stood back, I do think this could, I probably could lower it a bit. Overall, I'm happy with the placement. I just think it might be a tad too high. So I could loosen the string to bring it down ever so slightly. I will leave it in this position for now and maybe lower it. I'll see how I feel over the next couple of days. When I stand central to it though, I like 
that it's central to the bed and not central to the wall as previously discussed. Although that side is wider, I don't think it looks hugely off balance. But it feels nice to actually put a tiny little bit of personality into this room because I have literally put zero efforts into making this room nice. I only come in here to sleep and that is it. So I've not really focused, I've not really given this room much attention. I've literally got bedside table, my bed, uh, a lamp, I have a wardrobe space over there and that is it. I used to have the full length mirror in here. It, um, it lived against this wall here, sometimes there, sometimes that side, but now it's in the front room. This whole wall is completely bare. And I was thinking potentially, it, I mean, it's a really big bedroom space, but it's slightly awkward. I was thinking of getting another full length mirror and putting it there and then maybe having some sort of small console here. But the issue with that is if it comes out too far, I don't give myself much room to get into the bathroom. So then I was like, oh, it would actually be really lovely to have something long, like a long set of drawers on this wall. But the radiator poses a bit of an issue because it's quite a thick radiator. It comes out quite far. So I wouldn't be able to have drawers up against the wall. Um, and I'd probably end up giving myself quite a narrow walkway here. So I thought I could potentially have a small console thing here and a full length mirror the other side of the radiator or leaning up against or something above the, I'm not sure, just not sure. It's not my main priority at the moment. I'm sort of focusing on the dining space still and the kitchen area just because I don't spend a lot of time in this room. I literally, I don't think I've ever really showed the full, sort of full tour of this room. That's my wardrobe space. One day I will show you. Like I've got full length mirrors in the wardrobe space, but I can't, I can't really step back too far. And I just think it's, I always love to have a quite a large full length mirror in a bedroom. Um, but for now, we've got a little bit of colour, a little bit of something on the wall. Um, baby steps, hey? I've been doing some quite sporadic Depop uploading this month and look what I finally have. Compostable bags to put all your lovely items in. Very pleased about these because I've been, a lot of the time I either reuse packaging from other items or I've been trying to get through this big bulk order of plastic bags that I've had from, I think it was the beginning of last year. Ordered so many. Um, so I've just been trying to get through them and now I finally have fully compostable bags to post all of your items in. I try and keep the packaging as minimal, minimal as possible. Sometimes I do feel like it's a little bit too minimal. So I, recently I've been wrapping things in tissue paper. So for example, this item is wrapped very nicely in some patterned tissue paper. All the tissue paper is saved from like deliveries of other items. I'm not buying this tissue paper new. Um, just so you know, if it comes quite crumpled, it's because it's already been used elsewhere. And I pretty much just leave it at that. But I was thinking, because I've been really consistent with, I, I feel like I'm fairly consistent with Depop. Every month I do post or upload quite a few things onto Depop. And I was thinking it might be nice each month to change up the charity that I donate part of the profits to and I thought to go alongside that it would be quite nice to maybe print off cards to include in each package just like a really simple note that says thank you for your purchase this month uh, your money has gone to or the money from this sale this month has gone to and then uh, there'll be a blank bit where I can just write the charity each month um, that way it kind of lets you know where your money has gone it's a thank you note but it's not some flashy packaging. It'll literally just be like a little slip of paper that can easily be recycled, just letting you know where your money has gone. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've, since moving, I just feel like I'm in this constant state of kind of clearing out. So I do think over the next month or so, there will be quite a lot more being um, uploaded onto Depop. So I will leave my Depop link in the description box because a few people have said when they try and type in my name, it just doesn't come up. I don't know why, because it is literally just Brittany Bathgate. Um, but yeah, I'll leave a link. And I'm not really going to announce times. I know that kind of seems frustrating, but I feel like when I was announcing times, it was just like this massive, like, 
stampede and people were like oh I was too slow or like you didn't upload at a time where I was awake and it's I felt like I couldn't cater to everyone so I just sort of do it quite sporadically now so that I feel like that seems a fairer way um, but I wonder if there's a way on Depop you can set it so you get a notification when someone uploads that must be a thing if it isn't then Depop are seriously missing a trick because that would be very helpful and I normally do it in bulk so if you see me starting to upload things it means over the next couple of days I'll be continuing to upload so that's a good signal normally um, okay I've rambled about Depop for quite a while See ya! <laughs>
very delightful mug. I will link that below. As I said, this is literally just my way of doing it. I, I've not Googled it. I don't know if this is the official way to make a matcha latte, but it tastes nice. So I put my hob on like the lowest heat because you don't want it to boil and you don't want it to burn. And then I put in, I'd say, not quite a heaped teaspoon, but somewhere in between, I don't know if that's gonna focus, heaped and regular. Just the one is enough for me, especially with this cup size. I'm not sure what the exact whisk method should be for making a matcha latte, but through trial and error, I have learned that it's best to do it quite briskly, but not for too long, because you can over whisk, I think, and then it sort of defroths and goes really flat. So I just briskly whisk for a short period of time. I avoid letting it come to a boil because A, it then takes ages to cool down, and B, it affects the taste, I find. I think maybe boiling it slightly burns the matcha, possibly, and it tastes, it just doesn't taste quite as nice once it's boiled. So I usually just wait until you see the sort of heat coming off the pan. I think we're almost there. Or you could just stick your finger in. Yeah, that's warm enough. Um, and I don't sweeten it or anything like that because I quite like the taste of matcha on its own. I kind of like the slight bitterness that it has. And I also think using the barista oat milk has a little, it's unsweetened, but I do think it has a slight sweet taste that complements the matcha. So, but I know some people put honey in their matcha um, to sweeten it. I'm definitely not at the stage yet where I can do some sort of matcha latte art. <laughs> but um, maybe I'll just do a circle, that's nice. And that is my matcha method. I only have one matcha a day, by the way, because if I had any more than one, I would be bouncing off the walls by the afternoon and I don't think I'd be able to get to sleep properly. So it's just one matcha a day for me. I'm going to go sit and enjoy this now. Before loads of you flock to the comments telling me the positioning of that picture's off, I am going to lower it. I have left it for a couple of days and I've realised that it is just a tad too high. Um, sorry, I'm just putting some lip balm on. I've just been sat with my matcha making a list of the YouTubers that I watch to talk you through because to be honest, there's not that many and I think you will many of you will know most of these YouTubers already. Um, a lot of them have been around for a long time. They're OGs, I like to call them. It's not a huge list because I don't watch as much YouTube as I used to. I'm 30 years old, almost 31 in like six weeks, and I've watched YouTube for many, many years. And the I found that the the, the content creators or YouTubers or whatever you want to call them that I used to watch and love religiously have either gone on to do different things, they've outgrown YouTube, they upload less frequently or they don't upload at all anymore. So I found myself watching less and less YouTube. And nowadays I struggle to find the content that I'm looking for within this space. And I think that's, I know the content's out there, but it's just finding it. And I don't really know what it is that I'm looking for here on YouTube. I just like watching things that either calm me or uplift me. And I feel like this list of accounts do, do either of those two things in some form or other. Um, so I'm gonna start off with UK based YouTubers. All three of these you will know. And like I said, you will probably know most of the people on this list because they're all quite big YouTubers that are very well known. I think a very obvious one that needs to be mentioned first is Lizzie, aka Shot From The Street. If you're looking for content that is similar to mine, you know, sort of like similar interests, then Lizzie is a very good one. Lizzie is a very, very dear friend of mine. Um, she's a really good friend and we have a lot in common and we have a lot of the same interests. So if you're looking for someone that talks about fashion, books, just sort of general lifestyle bits and vlogs in a bit more of a casual way, then Lizzie is definitely one to watch. Um, and two others, Sunbeams Jess, she, if you really like 
it's more slow paced content then Jess is a really good one she has a very calming and slow pace to her vlogs she also talks about books a lot so if you're into books then definitely check out Jess and then um a very another very obvious one Este Lalonde I mean do I need to say anything about Este she's been on YouTube she just did her 10 year anniversary which is incredible it's been amazing to watch her journey over the past 10 years I can't wait to see where she goes in the next 10 years um but you all know Este I don't need to say much about her she's brilliant but aside from those three I don't really watch any other UK based YouTubers um there are lots of other great UK YouTubers but I don't watch any of them just because like it's not quite the content that I'm looking for um I feel like the content I'm looking for kind of lends itself better to maybe more US and Canadian based content creators and Korean silent vloggers this is a corner of the internet that I have just discovered and quite frankly I never want to leave it's so calming and so heartwarming and my eyes have just been opened to this whole other world of vlogging and I'm obsessed um, I feel very safe when I'm in that sort of area of YouTube. I'll talk about that a bit more later on. But some other accounts that I watch, these are US and Canadian based ones. Rachel, aka That Chic. She is another one who's been on YouTube for a very long time and she doesn't upload that often anymore. I think she uploaded three times last year. However, she is doing 14 days of consecutive vlogging at the moment. So if you are into Rachel, get over there because we've got two weeks worth of content coming up. Um, she is such a unique soul and she has this beautiful way of communicating through video. It is unlike anything I've seen before. It's very, it feels very nostalgic. It's got that sort of home video DIY sort of collage feel to it. And it's very endearing and heartwarming. And she's just like no other. And no one could ever, I think, replicate what Rach is doing. She's just incredible. I met her a couple of years ago, actually, and she was exactly as I imagined her to be. The way she comes across in her videos, she's exactly like that in real life. Um, and I think I really enjoy watching Rach as well because we're of a similar age. Um, I feel like we're in similar sort of states or sort of stages of our lives. So I've really, I really enjoy watching her content. Another one on the same sort of, I guess, vibe as Rach is Christine. Her YouTube username is like Christine with like loads of S's and I's and T's. I never know how many there are. Um, but I'll obviously link all of these below and put bits on the screen. So this is visually appealing to watch. Christine is very multifaceted, which I love. She talks about plants, books, music, um, ceramics, skincare. She's really cool, like painfully cool and very calm and soothing to watch. There is There, there will be a repeat pattern here. Lots of these people are women that live on their own and they're in their 30s and they're very cool. <laughs> um, I, I met Christine as well, actually, probably like four years ago, maybe even five years ago, and just had a huge fangirl moment. I'm pretty sure I embarrassed myself massively because she was so cool and calm about it all and I just couldn't believe she was there. It was like a Gloucester event in London ages ago. Um, she is another quite sporadic uploader, but she has started uploading a little bit more regularly recently. She does these really cool general favourites videos which I really enjoy because she just talks about her favourite things from that month then and it's not limited to like beauty or fashion it's just a bunch of things she's enjoyed that month and through Christine I found um, Madeline De La Rosa who is an incredible incredible filmmaker another one that doesn't upload often but when she does boy is it a treat she does a lot of uh, video on Super 8 so she's got a very very cool aesthetic that her colour grading and editing is absolutely beautiful and she herself is just beautiful inside and out. She seems like such a beautiful soul and I find her so lovely to watch. Um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure her like day job is filmmaker. She always seems to be making really cool videos for bands and um, brands. Then at the other end of the YouTube spectrum, Emma Chamberlain. So Emma has 10 million subscribers. So I'm sure many of you will know of her in some sort of capacity. Now, Emma is quite young. I feel like she's maybe 18, 19. I'm not sure. She's a lot younger than me, basically. And I feel 
she feels very far removed from me, which I think is why I'm so attracted to watching her, because I feel like I'm this fly on the wall that sees into the life of a, a basically like a mega YouTuber. Um, and I just think she's hilarious. She's so quick witted and dry and funny and she just seems really unapologetically herself. She has a very, very unique editing style that somehow encompasses her personality. It's like her editing style is her personality. So it's something that can't really be replicated because it is so Emma. Um, but yeah, I just, I, watch, I don't watch every one of her videos. I tend to watch her videos when I kind of want a little bit of an uplifting boost or a little bit of motivation or just something that I know is gonna make me laugh. Um, so yeah, kind of, yeah, I kind of watch them when I need that little bit of a pick me up. I like to watch Allegra Shaw's vlogs quite often. Our styles are very different, so I don't really watch her fashion content, but I really like her personality. And I think she lives on her own and maybe she's 30 as well. Wow, there really is a repeat pattern here of women in their 30s living on their own. But yeah, I really like her personality. She's Canadian based and I see similarities between me and her sometimes, which I quite enjoy. Um, but I do, sometimes like, I do like to watch people who have a really different style to me because it's just, it's quite nice to view something different, basically. And I also really like Jenny, uh, AKA where I live. She's New York based, I believe. And her vlogs throughout lockdown have been brilliant. She lives on her own as well. And she, her content feels very comforting. Um, she spends, uh, like a lot of it over the past year has obviously been based at home, like m many people's content, but I've really enjoyed watching her each week create content in her flat, but it feels so different and fresh each week. I think that's a real skill um, in order to do. And I do feel like I've taken a lot of inspiration from her when it comes to trying to make your weeks feel different. Um, so they're kind of like all the, I guess, regular ones that I watch and then some recent discoveries. So as I mentioned, I have discovered Korean vloggers, mainly like Korean silent vloggers. It's brilliant. It like the, my favorite one to watch at the moment is Sudu or Suedu. I'm not hundred percent sure how to pronounce her name. And through watching her content, I've discovered a lot more. Uh, I will not try and pronounce names because I'm just worried that I'm going to make an absolute mess of them. But Sudu is, uh, by day, um, I'm pretty sure she's a videographer and a photographer, and you can tell. Her vlogs are like a, a mini cinematic experience. She has an incredible eye for framing very simple moments, and she really romanticizes the everyday, and anytime I watch her content, it makes me feel grateful for very, very small moments. Something as small as like pouring a hot drink, opening a book, getting into bed, incredible. Her editing is beautiful. Her colour grading is beautiful. It's just everything is so beautiful and so calming. I try and avoid screen time before I go to bed, but I make an exception for her vlogs. I pop them on my laptop and I put them sort of at the end of the bed just to help me doze off. Um, and then another one um, whose name I can kind of pronounce is, I think it's like Hey Greendal or Hi Greendal. H-A-E-G-R-E-E-N-D-A-L. I think it was. I haven't actually written it down, I just, I just remembered it. Again, I mean, they're all of a very similar nature in that they have this beautiful way of um, documenting quite small moments and everything's framed really nicely and there's nice lighting. They're not necessarily my kind of style in terms of fashion and things, but it's more the way the content makes me feel that I really enjoy. I will list them all below, like I said. And then I've also discovered Michelle Choi recently. She is New York based. She's quite big as well, so I'm sure many people will know her. And I, she lives alone <laughs> I'm, um, in New York and she creates just really nice vlogs. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like a little peek into what I watch on YouTube. There are many people that I miss that no longer create. Um, Chelsea Wears is one of them. She's so funny, but her and Ryan had a baby was it last year, a couple of years ago. Gosh, my concept of time is gone. So I completely understand why she is no longer uploading videos. And Cecilia Pering is another one who I really miss. There are a lot of them that I miss, but thankfully I slowly am sort of discovering new vloggers to watch. Um, 
If you have any suggestions or want to share your favourites, then please feel free to below because I'm always um, on the lookout for new content creators to watch. Well, 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 here we are once again, the end of another vlog and it is time for me to do my closing chat that I tend to do. Yeah, a very flat week uh, with lots of procrastination and lots of lack of motivation. Uh, but that's just the ebbs and flows of lockdown, isn't it? So this week, or, well, it depends when you're watching it. Um, this week was <laughs> the, the last week before our COVID restrictions changed. So at the moment, we are in a full hard lockdown. We have been in a full hard lockdown since Boxing Day, which feels like a lifetime ago. I, I know we've done this before, but I cannot wrap my head around how a quarter of a year has gone in a flash. I think this one just felt so much heavier because it was because of the time of year that we were locked down. So I think it's as of Monday or some point next week. So at the moment, the only thing that we're really allowed to do is go out for exercise with one other person. Exercise was never really clarified what that meant. Anyway, the new, the, the new easing of the lockdown means that we will be able to meet up with six other people outside. And that outside space includes people's gardens. Fingers crossed the weather stays nice so that we can have barbecues and nice lunches and that. I have to admit though, I'm feeling a bit meh about it all. And I think that is because for about four to five weeks now, I've just been on autopilot. And what I mean by that is that I've just been waking up each day and making sure I tick off the things I need to do to keep me sane and keep my head above water, going to bed, waking up again, you know, and repeating it. Just the same cycle for about five weeks now. And because of that, I've not really been having any sort of forward thinking thoughts. I've not really thought about the long-term goal or dates or anything like that, or this sort of roadmap thing. So when I was when I realised that the restrictions were changing, I thought, oh wow, okay, that's that's come around quickly. I completely for, kind of forgot about that. So I've not really put much thought into it uh, because I've just yeah, like I said, I've just been in, in this sort of autopilot mode. I think it's a great thing. It's going to be amazing for people. You know, you can now go to a family member's house and sit in their garden. It, you know, it's a really big deal. But there's part of me that's still a bit. I feel quite cautious. I was going to say pessimistic, but pessimistic is not the right word. It's like I'm looking forward to it, but at the same time, I'm a bit cautious and scared of it. And I think that's because I'm still very much in that same headspace as last time, where we all sort of got let out again. Let out sounds awful, doesn't it? We all, excuse me, I thought, oh, I thought I had some sort of hiccup then. Uh, yeah, we all got let out and then it all went wrong. And then we ended up back in lockdown again. So I'm still sort of in that headspace, but I need to remember that this time round, we have a vaccine now and lots and lots of people have been vaccinated and lots more people will continue to be vaccinated. So although obviously still need to be very cautious because there are so many people who haven't been vaccinated, uh, I think maybe I need to change my mindset around it. Uh, a little bit and think okay this time's different you know we've got the vaccination this will be different and you know it, surely it can only get better from here we can't we cannot make the same mistake as last time surely it's not possible to also I think what's making me feel a bit sort of indifferent about it is that uh, lockdown obviously is awful it's been horrible however <laughs> If you are introverted, uh, like myself, or you enjoy the lack of social pressure, or you kind of enjoy quiet time, I guess, or just not having to do as much socialising, you might agree with me when I say that lockdown has almost... For me, lockdown has validated a lot of the introverted tendencies I have, and the introverted part of me has quite liked lockdown because I haven't had those social pressures and I am quite scared about what this 
I guess, return to a, a, a type of normality will do for my introversion. Um, because I just get scared about the whole FOMO thing and feeling that social pressure to go to things and be out doing loads of socialising, otherwise people won't uh, include me or, you know, people will forget about me. You know, it's that sort of thing, like if I don't go to something, I get worried that I'll be forgotten about at the next thing. You know, it's just, it's just all a bit of a horrible cycle. So, yeah, that, that introverted part of me is a bit like, oh, I don't know how I feel about this, but we shall see. I'm still going to just stay on my little autopilot and just take it day by day uh, until I think it's April 12th, which is when hospitality and shops and things like that open up. Anyway, I'm not going to talk too much about it because we've all, I think we're all sick of talking about anything COVID related now, aren't we? But yeah, I haven't really done any sort of like COVID related chats uh, for a while. So I just thought I'd pop that in. So I'm going to end the vlog here. Um, I hope you've all had a good week and enjoyed this vlog. It's been a chatty one, a very, very chatty one, hasn't it? And I will see you all in the next vlog. I might do week in outfits next week. I'm not too sure yet. I'll check the weather forecast and see if it's worth it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next week.